Well, this is Larry Elmore, and Larry, my twin brother, uh, was one of our lead artists and did some fantastic art for lots of different Dungeons and Dragons property. And this is Harold Johnson, my uncle. No. And he, Lord, you did everything at TSR. I did do everything at TSR. Not just one thing, but everything. He was always a manager of something or my boss somehow. Some always in the structure. In so. the structure. But I've known Harold forever since I, my first week at TSR. My most popular thing is I did the red box cover, the D&D. &D. And the other stuff is I was sort of like the art director for Dungeons, uh, for, for Dragonlance. Dragon and I must add this, the Dragonlance story was told to me by this man and Tracy Hickman, how many years before it was published? A uh, year and a half before and we and ever half. published it. They came to my house, Sat my studio, <laughs> And they just told me this story about this thing that I think, it wasn't even called Dragonlance, it was called something else, wasn't it? Overlord! Overlord, Project yeah. Overlord! And they told me this big epic story and wanted to know if I would do two or three pieces of art to help sell this to the board of directors. We were looking for character sketches yeah. to uh, represent our characters. We expected line art. Tell them what you did. Well, I did some line art and colored it, and I did a couple of big, uh, quick, like, oil washes. But the story they told me is like, this is a great story. This, this will make some really good books. And sure enough, um, Dragonlance has been around a while. Okay. So yeah, Dragonlance, definitely one of our favorite uh, projects. That's right. Ravenloft, love Ravenloft. Yeah. You did yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, my first project with TSR was uh, the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide, yeah. first edition. You'll see some things in it. I actually wrote a section because Gary left out how to destroy artifacts. He said, use the destruction artifact table. And I said, uh, uh, Gary, no... do you have a copy of that? Didn't I write it? Uh, well, I can't find it. No, you just write it. So, so you had to write that. So I wrote it. I wrote a section. It was 100 ways to destroy artifacts. There are only eight in it <laughs> because we typeset all 100. And then Mike Carr, who was the editor, looked at it, took the galleys and went, snip. <laughs> and put the eight in. Yeah, put the eight in. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the others. The, in those days, everything was typewritten. Yeah. But Old somewhere place. it does exist. Yeah. What other things have we done? We did, oh, well, I, Gen Con. We used to do Gen Con. Oh, yeah. Art, Gen Con. The art room. Yeah. Uh, lots of things well, I wound up... a long time ago, uh, the first Gen Con I was going to, they said um, uh, the artist has to pick up trash and park cars. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. It's a horrible job. I said, and I'd only been to one convention before, and this convention had an art show, and I said, conventions has art shows. And they said, well, how do you know? I said, they all do. Don't you know that? And I was talking to Jim Rosloff, and you was Jim's boss at that time. Yep. And I said, we've got to have an art show. And I kept bugging them about an art show. And then finally, it went up to Chain of Command, up here, and they got permission to do one experimental art show. And, um, and it was successful, and then they had one the next year, still a trial. And then after that, the art show became part of Gen Con. So the art show was created by me and a couple more artists trying to get out of work. Yes. So that was about yes. it. And, and then, thanks to him, it, it went through. It, yeah. And and on top of that, when I started with them, I started looking at art shows at WorldCon yeah. and so on. Real and art show, said, yeah. Well, we got to up our game. <laughs> Until yeah. they got their own uh, big room, uh, yeah. one of the octagons, and yeah. we brought in other artists, and it got bigger and bigger. Bigger, and, it kept expanding, uh, yeah. And it's beautiful nowadays. Uh, yeah. Diesel actually runs it at Gen Con. Yeah, day before. So, uh, my first experience at Gen Con was 1976. I came there and I criticized the AD&D Open, which ran for the first year. And they said to me, do you think you can do better? <laughs> and I said, yeah. <laughs> no one <hell. laughs> And they said, well, you want to run a tournament? I said, well, I've opened my big mouth. Sure, I'll run one next year. And they said, no, now. This year, yeah, now. <laughs> You'll run one 
tomorrow. We will get you gamers. We will get you uh, prizes. We'll get you a place to run. Uh, okay. <laughs> so from the first, I was working with Jed Cod. Uh, but then when I uh, took over, actually got employed by the company, first year, 1979, I'm working on the Dungeon Master's Guide. It's gone to the print. And uh, I'm assigned something called the character record sheet because it's a year and a half behind. Fix this for me, they say. I say, no. They go, what? I said, I, I don't have time to do that. What are you doing? I'm answering the phone because Joe Orlowski is over on the site and there's nobody here answering the phone for Gen Con and we don't want to piss off customers. I think that's probably one of the reasons I wound up a manager was I yeah. kept telling them I wasn't well, doing stuff. kept doing things that need to be done. So like I said, all the time I knew Harold at TSR, he was always a manager. And one thing I always used to say about Harold too was he's one of the hardest working managers there was. He believed in the company and believed in the product. And what I liked about him, when he went to bat for you, it was always about what he believed in, the company. It wasn't something for a personal gain. It was always for the product or for the company. So he was a good company man. And I, I respected that. I always respected Harold for that. This man is an incredible artist. He has transformed the look of fantasy art for our industry and uh, I really respect him for that. Plus, of course, Snarf Quest. Yeah. We, we, uh, Snarf, you gotta mention Snarf Quest. In Dragon Magazine, what a wonderful, wonderful character, plus all the characters that look like Betty. My hey, wife. Betty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Snarf was a fun project, and it's, I don't know how much money that little cartoon guy's made me over the years. And even last, well, about a month ago, I ran a, a Kickstarter on a new 64-page uh, color Snarf graphic novel. And um, I'm working on that now. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I don't know, working at TSR all those years, people like Harold and other artists and everything else, it was a great experience. We all had a wonderful time, really. We I mean, there was ups and downs, but we all fought for the company and fought for what we thought was a good product. Always, right. a product first. Always, uh, and on top of that, we became family. Oh yeah. I think we definitely- the whole company. Uh, feel like uh, we are there for each other yeah. and we'll always be there for each yeah. other. Yeah. So it, 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 it's more than just a company. It yeah, was, if working there is like no other place any of us ever worked. It wasn't a job, it turned into a family. Yeah. It really did. At TSR. Do you have a one moment or so many? I have memorable moments, all kinds of memorable moments. Good ones. Uh, do you want good ones or just memorable? Okay, how about the time that Lorraine Williams comes to me at the last minute on Friday? I'm thinking it's 3.45. I don't have long before I get to go home. And she says, we forgot to dress the windows at Toy Fair. And oh, I yeah. need you to dress the windows. I, it's I, in New I, York. I, I'm not the art director, get this? And she says, yeah, I know. I say, what do you need? I need helmets. Helmets, yes, like four of them. Night helmets, okay, I got that. Um, could we maybe do something else, like swords? Yeah, one sword. Uh, okay, a suit of armor? Yeah, armor would be good. But I still want helmets. Okay, well, when do you need this by? Oh, that's the good news. We have somebody leaving at 5.30 in the morning on Saturday. So you had to be on the plane or did No, not me. But you had to get the stuff. From 3.45 till that 4 o'clock in the morning, no sleep, trying to figure it out. And most people, I, I did say, and why are you asking me? Well, Lorraine was sure you were the person who could make this happen. Well, that's true. So and you I made it happen, didn't you? I did. I started wor working with Jean Raby. She called RPGA contacts. We had a backup. We went to uh, our friend Jeff Easley. Guess what he collects? Helmets. Helmets. He had some helmets. So we borrowed a couple from him. We got a uh, 
queer boli, that's the boiled leather yeah. uh, vest plate, but in fact, it was a clothes horse. So I had to take it, I had to dismount it from the clothes horse. And one of the helmets was mine from SCA. Uh, SCH, yeah, SCA. Yeah. But I hadn't finished it. I had bought the helm. So what I did was that evening, I created faux rivets yeah. and, and painted it. And that was the other helm. And we had it boxed and ready for them at 4.30. And then I went home to sleep. <laughs> I guess one of my most memorable moments was um, I was doing sketches for the uh, Red Dragon box cover, and the sketches were sent up to Gary, and Gary would he would knock them down. He didn't like them, and they'd come to the sketch back and say he didn't like it. And this happens two or three times, and I said, "Well, I need to go talk to Gary." And everybody was like, "You can't talk to Gary." I'm like, "Well, why? Oh, you just can't talk to Gary." I said, "Well." We could go back and forth like this for a month. I need to know what he wants. And I said, well, I'm gonna go up to his office and talk to him. They're like, oh my God, no. Like I'm breaking some horrible rule. Been there. And I thought, well, the most he can do is fire me, you know? So I go up to the office where his, there was a secretary had a big office before you get to his office. So I went to the secretary's office and I told her, I said, I need to see Gary. Well, she wondered what I was there for. I said, I need to see Gary. She said, do you have an appointment? I go, no. He said, well, you can't see him. I'm like, well, I need to see him. It's about business. It's important. You can't see him without an appointment. Well, we were arguing, and I was getting mad. I was I was wanting to get in and see him. And the door was open. I could see his feet in there propped up on a desk. I kept getting louder, and the secretary was going to throw me out. And all of a sudden, Gary stuck his head out the door. He said, you want to see me? I go, yeah. He said, well, come on in. So I go in there, and he sits down and props his feet back up. And he talks to me a minute, asked me how I like working at TSR and everything. I said, fine. He said, what do you want to see me about? And I said, this Red Dragon thing, I mean, this um, basic basic box thing. I said, I need to know what you want because I keep doing sketches and you keep shooting them down. I said, we can do this forever. He said, I want something simple, just like one dragon and just maybe one warrior or something. He said, I want it to just jump out and grab you. He put his hands out like this, and he just leaned over his desk. And I said, I got you. So I went back and drew that old red dragon that's jumping out at you, and that one warrior did that drawing, took it back to his office, and he said, that's exactly what I want. And that saved us another week of going it back did. and forth. Yeah. It did. But I thought I was going to get fired to get in and see him, you know, by, the, by his secretary, you know. Been there. Yeah. I, would, I have a similar si side tale when we were doing Oriental Adventures, and it was Gary's project, and they came to us and said, this needs to be out by um, Gen Con. Yeah. And no, normally something like that took two and a half years. And I said, okay, it's February. Do you have the finished manuscript? Well, we got 20% of it, and it's got to be done in time. And I said, and they said, and it's impossible. There's no way just production time it's going to take a year. I said, no, it's just the way you do it. We'll figure it out. But I got to talk to Gary. And they're going, you can't talk to Gary. I don't know why they did that. They did that. It's like you can't I talk said, to him. I said, I don't believe that. It's just how you, he wants his opinion understood. And we went, and I sat down with him and explained what I needed. And he said, sounds good. Sounds great. I'll do that. And I said, now we got to talk compensation. And I had some different proposals that were on the back end. You know, let it get, let it get published. Let us make some money, and we'll pay them based on the sales we've already made. He surprised the hell out of us with his offer, which was basically to share his royalty with the, the co-author. And it was like, oh my God. But, I yeah, Gary was really Gary was, really nice guy. Yeah, I mean, if you can get in to talk to him, you got all your problems solved. It's just getting in to talk to him. Yeah, you know, almost had to fight people. Yeah, great man. Yeah, great man. Well, this whole last year, I worked on a big Kickstarter book and just got it all out, all shipped. So I'm sort of breathing a sigh of relief. Um, I was told you earlier about the Kickstarter uh, Snarf Quest thing. I've got to start to work on that this month.
because I've got to do about 36 more pages in color in the next month or so. So I'm going to be very busy. All right. Um, how can people find out more about your projects? You well, you didn't ask my project. I'm sorry. Do you, what's, what's my project? I don't know. I have I have a variety of projects. Here's the plugs. I now have a bookstore. It is the bookstore in Lake Geneva called Breadloaf Books. It was here when I came up Long in 1976. Uh, it has gone through several owners' hands, and it wound up uh, being bought by the husband of Marlene Vale. Yeah. And um, it was his lifelong dream to own a bookstore, and he. He did. Unfortunately, after about four months, he had a heart attack and we lost him. But uh, uh, he was a good friend and I stepped up and the, helped run the shop while they were trying to figure out the future. And so now we own a shop together, uh, Marlene and I, I run the shop. And so if you ever need books. Yeah. Um, the other project I'm doing is I'm doing a new convention in Milwaukee, and it's called Nexus Game Fair. It's going to be the third Thursday, uh, third weekend of June every year. We've already planned three years worth. We're trying to bring gaming back to the summer of uh, Milwaukee, and uh, you get online. It's called NexusGameFair.com. You find everything I don't about know who's it. running that. I'm one of several stockholders. Okay. But I am on the board of directors, and everybody else is doing it because they think this is a great opportunity, and we're going to reach out and make a very successful con. Me? Good Guess what fun. I'm doing? I want to experiment. There's all these things I think that we could do to improve conventions, and it's a forum for me to try those things. That's good. So I, I intend to come. It's, it's going to be all sorts of gaming. That's Nexus. A crossroads of gaming. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm topped out on Facebook. I've got 5,000 friends. I didn't know you could top out. and uh, But I still post up there. I mean, it's public, so you can see things there. And uh, my website, although I'm neglected for a year, it needs a lot of work, but LarryOmore.com. Uh, uh, and... Um, I guess that's the main two places, and you can always call me. <laughs> Email me right now, sort of bad. I'm 12,000 emails behind <laughs> because of the Kickstarters and stuff. So it's rough right now in emails. Um, so I have a lot of you people. Know, that's businesses what the delete call button me. is for. Well, these I haven't even read them yet. That's 12,000 unread, okay? And it's not spam, it's stuff. You know, like, like if you did like 10 a day, you would be done. Take you, no, I know. That's the bad part. I, I, I'd have to hire someone full time to catch up. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, email unanswered to I'm just going to skip ahead and start fresh. You needed to be there. Back in the uh, early days of TSR, they hired Gene Wolfe to come up and talk to us about writing and being better writers. So Gene Wolf, the author, came up and sat with us and he said, the secret to being a great author is, and it didn't make any sense to us at that time, answer your mail. So, I better answer, answer my your mail. mail. <laughs> they didn't have email then. It's just like it couldn't just come in by the billions, you know. That's right. Oh, Lord. Yeah.